Good morning, and uh, thank you for inviting me, Ed, to OSCON. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Before me, I um, I'm always uh, dreamed about this. Today, I'm going to talk about a very relative subject called open cloud, open data. It's something that uh, I care about a lot. What I, would, what I do, a few words about myself. Um, I uh, lead a team called the Interoperability Strategy Team in Microsoft. And my team is a resource to the, to the Microsoft product teams at large to help them think about their interoperability strategy and implement it. Uh, interoperability is simply the way we think about it, about how Microsoft software work with non-Microsoft software. A lot of the project, what we do, actually the vast majority of them as open source, and you can see them at the website there, interoperabilitybridges.com. A lot of people tell me that I work on the same thing since 25 years. Um, I, I think I agree with them. Um, I was uh, uh, living in Europe, in France, for many years, 10, 15 years, and I spent my time in the 80s helping big companies, research institutes, etc., hook together multiple platforms, multiple IT systems, moving data around from one platform to another in what was called at that time uh, SGML, the ancestor of XML. And um, the internet came, and uh, Microsoft hired me around uh, in 96. And that's where I was lucky to uh, work with a set of people, a very, very small family of people. Um, it really reminds me a lot of the OSCON family here. We used to, to uh, meet every year in Boston, almost the same format. And we always dreamt to change the world. Um, so I was working with people from Sun, with John Bozak, Tim Bray, many people in HP and SoftQuad, et cetera. And we always wanted to change the world in a very fundamental way, which is simply to enable a free flow of data across the world, across platforms, across operating systems, across languages. This is something we were working on, you know, we were dreaming about. And of course, the internet came and gave us the connectivity, but we still needed this language. And so I was lucky enough to work with them. And at the end of the day, a lot of communities took and embraced XML to, to enable this, the, 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 this idea. But then today, this is a new inflection point with the cloud. And actually, um, you know, surprisingly, it seems that the adoption of the cloud is going to be faster than what we were envisioning. Uh, it seems to me that early adopters are using it left and right. They tried, and they like it. And so why we're thinking about, you know, they like it for many reasons. Um, sometimes it's easier when, about the elasticity. Sometimes you need, uh, you know, computing power on a very specific point. Um, so there are many reasons. And so because of that, since we have been working since a few years already with multiple versions of our software that we are releasing, working with industries, I work with standards bodies since a long time now, since, you know, maybe 20 years. And we were thinking about, well, there are going to be a lot of cloud platforms. There are going to be a lot of you know, different operating systems, a lot of different you know, uh, implementations. And well, they have to work together. They have to be interoperable. And so today, after many thinking and talking with a lot of people in the industry, we were, I was thinking to you know, have Microsoft contribute to the conversation around how to build interoperable cloud platforms. And so we launched today a new site on what we, what we call the, you know, the elements of an interoperable uh, cloud. So today, we are thinking that there are four important elements, and we want to, literally to engage with the conversation with the industry and continue this conversation. The first one is data portability. And when we talk you know, with a lot of users, with a lot of customers, they all want to control their own data. I think there was a, a talk yesterday around this, and we completely agree. For us, Microsoft is very simple. The user, the customer, own his own data. You should be able to put it in the cloud. You should be able to get it out. It's as simple as that. So data portability, that's something that Again, I'm working on it since a long time, but we thought that it would be very important to put as 
a fundamental or foundational element for cloud interoperability. The second one is standards, of course. Now, a lot of people, I go and, and, you know, and, and speak and meet with a lot of people around the world, and uh, people tell me, what, what is the new standard of the cloud? <laughs> and, and that's kind of interesting. You know, we all need to know there are a lot of existing standards that already exist and that we need to reuse as much as possible. We should not you know, be reinventing uh, things that where we don't need them. But also, there are a lot of new things that could be created. And it's, it's worth looking at a lot of new standards that are recreated around in the MTF or W3C or other places. A lot of all of those standards actually originate from a lot of open source communities left and right. The third one is about ease of migration of deployment. And that is very simple to understand. So a lot of people today are not using the cloud still. And so we thought that it would be very interesting, very important to think about how on-premise existing you know, implementations, if it's the LAMP stack or other stacks or, you know, or, or, or any on-premise your existing you know, uh, uh, software can coexist with those new public clouds or other clouds that are, you know, uh, that, that are uh, being developed now. And so this idea of coexistence between, um, and it's all around new scenarios because you can easily think about uh, clouds coexisting with other clouds and with on-premise uh, scenarios. And when you talk about coexistence, interoperability is extremely important. And the thing that has to go between these clouds has to be very well understood in order to, to do interoperability. And last but not least is what we call developer choice. And so we think that if you want to use PHP, you should be able to use PHP. If you want to use Java, you should be able to use Java. You want to use Ruby, C Sharp, C++, whatever it is, this is, you know, we believe that you need to be able to use any language you want on the cloud and any, for that matter, any developer tool, if it's Eclipse or Visual Studio or whatever it is, or no, none at all, or Emacs. I, will, I used Emacs. This was my best one a long time ago. So Ed was telling me, you know, discuss a little bit about Azure. Uh, a lot of people here would be interested and so we created Azure from the ground up as an open and interoperable platform. So I'm going to tell you a few minutes <clears throat> about that. So Azure has three big, uh, you know, basic layer. The first one is the Windows Azure is a basic layer which basically enables the scalability, the elasticity, uh, manages the files and all of this. The second one is SQL Azure which gives you the basic you know, uh, relational uh, database in the sky. And the third one is like the wrapper, is what we call the app fabric. Um, the app fabric. And uh, it basically gives you a service bus. This is the one that will enable you to connect multiple clouds or to connect on-premise and, and, and public clouds. Now, what's interesting in Azure is that we created all of this with a set of standardized open interfaces based on XML and REST and, you know, and, 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 uh, and you know, all these things that you, that you know here. Um, an interesting protocol is called OData that um, we opened up and, um, and you know, there is odata.org, you can learn more about it. It has been now in, uh, you know, uh, uh, adopted by multiple platforms and enables you basic queries and CRUD operations on data. Um, there are a lot of implementations. But the most interesting is that the basic layer of access is based on these open protocols. And because of that, you can start creating a lot of SDKs, a lot of tools based on the language of your, cho of, of, uh, of your choice. So for example, here, you can have PHP. You know, you, we, today, we already build a lot of SDKs with the community. All, all of this is open source. Uh, PHP and Java SDKs that enables you, for example, to connect to the app fabric. And, and, and if, if, I, if I discuss a little bit about what we call ease of deployment, you can be thinking very uh, simply here on, um, on a scenario where, uh, for some reason, you put a database behind the firewall, and you can, use, uh, you can have a small database in the sky, and then connect them through a workflow engine, through App Fabric, using all these REST uh, XML-based protocols uh, to, to just uh, do the synchronization. The same thing here on, in terms of uh, development choice, you can host whatever language on Azure. So again, if you want to use PHP or any other runtime, you can do it today. And 
Um, and if you, if you want also to use on the basic platform, you know, or the language of your choice as well, this, this, is, this is available. Again, um, we worked a lot with uh, Eclipse community and uh, also, of course, uh, you can use the Visual Studio to develop. And today we are shipping, um, you know, a, a few uh, command lines uh, tool to enable any PHP application to be moved with a set of configuration uh, on, on, on Azure. Uh, we are also uh, shipping uh, uh, an open SDK for OData for the iPhone. So this is just to give you an idea on our thinking around interoperability for a cloud based on these four uh, uh, important uh, elements. So just the speaker before me was, 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 was asking us to dream a little bit. And uh, of course, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, we, are not, we didn't arrive to the level that you are asking us to do. But there is a very interesting application that because of the openness of the platform and the connectivity across the platforms independently of you know, who built them and, and, and if it's commercial or open source, we were able to create uh, something called ionearth.eu, which enables a lot of source crowding, a lot of uh, users to go see across Europe uh, the actual climate and uh, air quality and water monitoring where you can actually see if you want what is the air quality or the water quality of your favorite beach and, and go through it and update it. I would encourage you to look at this. So today, um, what we are saying is that um, we want to deepen a conversation uh, into multiple communities, with open source communities, with standards bodies, with existing organizations, on the basic thinking of what an open cloud platform is. We believe that you know, there are four foundational elements that are, if you want, uh, uh, pieces of the puzzle that need to be thought of when you think about creating those open cloud platforms. The four are data portability. You own your data. It's as simple as that. Uh, you get it in. You should be able to get it out. Standards the actual integration, coexistence between your on-premise, your existing applications, and the public clouds, and everything that's going you know, in between. And the fourth one is simply the possibility to use the language, runtime, or tool of, the choice, of your choice. And so what we would like is to you know, uh, take those, 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 you know, those discussions uh, have an open uh, conversations with all of you. Uh, we want to you know, discuss this with multiple, inside of multiple forums. Of course, you can give us direct feedback. That's it. Thank you very much. And I think I have my 15 minutes. Thank you.